Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. As we embark upon this holiday season, Christmas is here, we study and ponder the meaning and the reason for Christmas. And as we go into our second service of the Christmas spirit we left off last week with Mary going into the hill country to visit her cousin Elizabeth. And she tarried there with cousin Elizabeth for three months while she gave birth to John the Baptist. So this morning we will pick up where we left off and begin to continue to explore the meaning and the cause of Christmas. A season dawned by Christian people to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And that birth of Jesus Christ is the gift that keeps on giving. And Amen. that's why we give gifts at Christmas. Yes. We want to emulate Christ being the gift that we receive. Yes. And if you will notice through the reading of the story and the birth of Christmas, you'll find that God was the only one that gave. We were on the receiving end, and we continue to receive. Thank you, Lord. So, again, last week we left off at Mary going into the high country. And entering into the house of Zachariah. And it says that when she entered in, she greeted her cousin Elizabeth. And with that greeting, cousin Elizabeth was filled with the spirit. And the babe in her womb leaped for joy because she was in the presence of God in Mary. So Mary continued again and tarried there with cousin Elizabeth for three months, it says. In um, Luke chapter 1 and verse 58 or 56, it says, And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. So Mary stayed with cousin Elizabeth for three months. And then she returned. Now, <coughs> Mary returns to Nazareth, to her hometown. And needless to say, she is espoused or engaged to Joseph. And Joseph would have noticed any changes in Mary. Because Mary come back after three months, she's three months wiser and she's three months bigger, or let's say she's three months different than she was when she left. And Joseph, looking at Mary carefully, lovingly, and lustfully, meaning that Joseph would have noticed it if Mary would have had a hangnail on her pinky finger. He would have, he would have noticed it because he had been paying close attention. She was his espoused wife. And you have to understand that that espousal, that engagement, was a one-year commitment. So it doesn't tell us how far along in that commitment they were. But it says that when she came back, she was found with child. In the book of Matthew, chapter 18, it says, Now... The birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child. For the Holy Ghost, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, he mined. He was mine to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, you son of David, 
fear not to take unto you Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Now you notice it says that she was found, meaning Joseph found out that she was pregnant. And now, being a just man, he has to figure out what to do with it. Joseph knows the law the same as Mary knows the law. And he understands that if he complains or if he spreads this information, then Mary is in danger. So, in our understanding of depression and stress, the medical community says that people in those conditions sleep a lot, and we find that Joseph went to sleep. He, he, was, he went to sleep. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and explained to him what was going on and what to do about it. And it says that when Joseph found out that she was pregnant, he didn't do like what we would do. He didn't, he didn't conduct himself as we would because of the danger that it would have brought to Mary. So he had to be quiet about it. And again, we don't know how long the engagement had been going on, but he had a whole year to wait before he could consummate the marriage. You see, they were legally married, but they weren't physically married. They were legally married because in this culture, they did their vows and everything at the betrothal ceremony. And then on the wedding night, they just had a big celebration. And then the guy got to take his wife home and consummate the marriage. Do you understand what we're saying here? That the consummation was what sealed the deal. Mm -hmm. Isn't it it's strange? It just, but isn't it strange that, you see, we got it backwards. We, <laughs> we, we want to consummate first. <laughs> and then get married. But the scripture is clear that Joseph and Mary had not come together. That's what the word says. It says, was found with the child before they came together. And then in verse 24, it says here, then Joseph, being raised from the sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife, his wife. They were legally married, but they weren't physically married. And he knew her not until she had begotten, brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. So Joseph went ahead and took his wife. And it, it is not important, but it is Curious as to how long the marriage or the espousal had gone because of the marriage. Because sensible people will understand that, you know, you don't get married today and then two months down the road the baby is born and you did. <laughs> that that just it, the, the math doesn't add up. So Joseph took Mary in as his wife then. So those, the engagement must not have been a long period of time, in other words. So he must have taken her in marriage before it was noticeable that she was pregnant. But it says that Joseph took her to be his wife, took her home. He didn't consummate the marriage because it clearly states again that he didn't know her until after the child was born. So you see, Mary was a virgin when she gave birth to Jesus. And these are the things that we have to take into our Christmas celebration. The stress and the dedication, the love and the consideration, the compassion, all of these things that went into the birth of Jesus mm -hmm. is what provides us with the Christmas season. We are concerned mostly with the gifts and with the celebration, but there is a lot of interaction that goes into Christmas that we're, we are to be dedicated 
to Christ. Yes. We are to be loyal to Christ. We are to understand that having this celebration and this joyous time of the year was brought on by a lot of suffering and a lot of pain and a lot of decisions and a lot of things that made it worthwhile to sacrifice that was gone into this. See, Mary had to give up her life of a normal marriage and a normal childbirth and all of the things that we consider normal because of this spiritual operation. You see, Mary didn't go into the hill country to visit Cousin Elizabeth to verify Cousin Elizabeth's pregnancy because Cousin Elizabeth was so old that Mary said, I gotta go see this. You know, this woman, she can't be pregnant. Mary went to Cousin Elizabeth because Cousin Elizabeth was the only woman in the world that had what Mary needed. Mary needed advice. Mary needed to know how to deal with what she had. And Cousin Elizabeth was the only one who had that experience because she was dealing with a miracle pregnancy herself. So Mary sat there for three months and watched and listened and understood and, and determined what was going on with Cousin Elizabeth. You see, because when Mary spoke to Cousin Elizabeth, the Bible says that Cousin Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak. So Cousin Elizabeth told Mary that she was pregnant before Mary told Cousin Elizabeth that she was pregnant. So you see, God is all-powerful and all-knowledgeable. So Amen. these things just didn't come into, oh, look what happened. No, nothing just happened. God put all of this in order. And as we continue with the story, you'll see that God is in control and he makes things work the way they should work, so Amen. that his divine plan will come to fruition. You see, because now that Joseph has taken Mary to be his wife, it says that they came up with a tax where the whole world should be taxed. And everybody who was to be taxed had to go back to their original family location. So Joseph had to pack up with Mary and if you read the story in uh, Luke chapter 2, it will say that Mary was great with child. Meaning that by the time these texts came out, that Mary was really big now. She was ready to produce. And he had to travel with Mary from Nazareth to Bethlehem. The city of David, it says. Bethlehem. So everybody had to go back to their original family origin to pay the taxes. So he packs Mary up and they take this trip to Bethlehem. And it says that when they arrive in Bethlehem, that there is no room in the inn. They get there and there's nowhere to stay. And if we uh, are just rationalizing things, we would understand that because that was the city of David. That was the city where David was born. Joseph, being of the lineage and house of David, had to go back to Bethlehem. And now think of David. David had seven brothers. David himself had 19 sons. 19 sons by his wives. That doesn't count the sons that he had by his concubines. So the point I'm trying to stress here is that Nazareth was full of people. So if just Jesse's family could have filled the town up, so think of all the other people. You know, if all of David's brothers was as fertile as he was, then that would fill the town up. So there was no room in the end. So this, again, nullifies some of our preconceived notions that Joseph and Mary, man, they were so poor that they couldn't even get a room. They had to have the child in us. No, it was not that they were so poor. It was that there was no place for them. They didn't have a place. So the Bible says that she gave birth in a barn, in a stable. So we have to again think of the stress. Now here's Mary and Joseph in a stable. And she's giving birth. And Joseph is the midwife. He has he has to deliver his baby. 
Are you, are you understanding the stress? Are you understanding the commitment, the sacrifice, the things that goes into our Christmas celebration? Joseph delivers the baby, and it says that in that same country there were shepherds tending their flocks, sleeping in the fields at night. Shepherds sleeping in the fields at night. And it says that the light, the glory of God, lit up the place so bright that the, the shepherds was fearful, was so afraid. But then the angel appeared and told, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid because I'm bringing you good news tonight. Good news, and it is for everybody, for all people. This is good news for all people. Now you have to understand again that he's talking, the angel is talking to shepherds about the king of glory being born. And that's the good news that is good for all people. Amen. And that all people is very important in that statement because of who he's talking to. He's talking to shepherds who are sleeping in a field. And when you read the mentality or the attitude towards shepherds, you will find that it is the same attitude that we have against street people. <laughs> Not against them, but it's what we perceive them to be, for some instance. But it says clearly that shepherds were considered nasty, a dirty, because they slept outside with sheep. And they probably had sheep dip on their shoes and stuff. <laughs> and, and they were stinky. This, this is what they said they were stinky. And it said they were untrustworthy. It said they were liars. Shepherds in, in the biblical definition is, again, how we see street people who sleep on the street. And they're, they're naturally dirty because they don't have the facilities to clean up. And they eat whatever they find. And we wouldn't trust them in our home because we think they steal something. So that was a shepherd. We think they lie to get anything that they want. So that was the attitude for shepherds. And I'm telling you this because it, it tells us where Jesus, or where God's mind was about baby Jesus. He told the shepherds because the good news and the glad tidings were for all people. And if he'd have been born in the Ritz Carlton or in the palace, then all people would not have had access to it. You understand what I'm saying? The shepherds could not have went to the palace and told the king, well, I want to see Jesus. They just said, get out of here before I kill you. <laughs> but being shepherds and him being born in the stable, now they have access. Mm -hmm. So God put all of this in motion for his divine plan. Mm -hmm. Nothing just happened. So he was born in a stable and laid in a manger. And that's what the angel told the shepherds. They said, we're bringing you great tidings tonight. For unto you, a king or a child, a savior is born in the city of David. He is a child wrapped in swaddling clothing and lying in a manger. That that is a clue. He is wrapped in swaddling clothing and lying in a manger. Meaning wrapped in swaddling clothing didn't, didn't mean that they were poor again and they wrapped him up in rags. They wrapped every brand new baby in that era. They wrapped him in swaddling clothing. And the swaddling clothing was to keep his limbs straight. So they could have went into Bethlehem and probably found 15 swaddling clothed kids. But they're lying in a manger. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> lying in a food trough for animals. Mm -hmm. That was the clue. Mm -hmm. You would not find a baby, a newborn baby, lying in a food trough for animals. So you see, the shepherds now know where to look when they go to see this baby. They look in the stable somewhere because that's the only place you're going to find a manger. It's in the stable because that's where you feed the animals. So you see, 
all of these things were put into place by God mm -hmm. so that we would have access to Jesus. So when the angel appeared, and then a heavenly host, it says, appeared, and they sang and praised God, and, and all of the things they said, peace on earth and goodwill to all men, and all of the things that they said to the shepherds, and then they left and went back into heaven, and the shepherds said to one another, let's go and see this thing that they just told us about. So they go into Bethlehem to find Jesus, and again, he wasn't hard to find. Only they went to the stable. And when they found him, they got to see and to worship and praise Jesus. Shepherds, stinky men, dirty men, men that the society looked down upon. But they were the first to see Jesus. And I'm trying to say that in order for Jesus to be available for all people, mm -hmm. he had to first be available to the lowest of the law. Because if he'd only been available to the kings, if the angel had showed up to the king and said, a child is born, a king, the king would have tried to kill him. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way it was. That's a threat to the king. He's got all the power. Nobody else coming around here with no power. Mm -hmm. So they told the lowest people. And now it gives us the unction. It gives us the... the Assurance. It gives us the authority to seek Jesus, to, to speak uh -huh. to Jesus, and to look upon Jesus the same way we look upon each other. Because He is available to us too. Because He is not only in the high places. He's not only in the palace. And not only for the rich and for the king. So this is what God put in place for us. This is a gift to all men, it says. Thank you, Lord. All men. Amen. So when we look upon each other, we should see Christ in each and every one of us. Amen. There Amen. is no one greater or lower than anyone else in the sight of God. Amen. And this Amen. is what he put in place at Christmas time. These are things that we don't stop to consider as we go through life. Sometimes we take the wrong approach to life when we place ourselves higher uh -huh. than others. As the scriptures say, esteem others higher than yourself. Yes. So Christ was born for the world, for all people. And now the shepherds have gone to see him. And then what do they do? They do exactly what the scripture tell us to do. To go into all the world yes. and preach and teach the gospel. Uh -huh. The Amen. shepherds left the manger, left Jesus and Mary and Joseph and went throughout the countryside telling everybody what they had heard and mm -hmm. what they had seen. They became evangelists. Yes. yes. And the Bible says clearly that a lot of people didn't believe them. It said people wondered what they were hearing. And you have to understand that. When we speak of Christ, some people believe us, some people don't. But think of hearing it from a homeless man. Mm -hmm. Think of hearing the word of God from a homeless man. Oh, don't pay him no attention. He's probably delirious. He's probably just <laughs> home for him. Say him <laughs> stuff. <Yeah. coughs> but those who had a heart to hear heard what he said. Yes. And wondered. Each and every one of us has a mandate from God. That when we hear and receive Christ to share that word. Yes. Thus he said, go into all of the world and <laughs> preach the gospel. Just go somewhere and tell somebody about Jesus. That's what the shepherds did. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing Jesus advised us when he left. Now go tell somebody about me. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. So here we find ourselves celebrating Christmas with the knowledge of Christmas. We will take a different approach mm -hmm. to Christmas and we would love more. We would love more 
because we know that love is what brought us to this place in the first place. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever believed in him should not perish. So you see, God gave his only begotten son. And this is how he gave him, through Mary and through Joseph. But he didn't come just as here it is. There had to be a lot involved. And it had to be precise. God is in control of all things. Nothing just happened. Amen. You don't just arrive at a place. God has placed you there for a purpose. And in that purpose, you are to fulfill that divine plan. And when he said go into all the world, when you show up, you don't have to start, well, Jesus loves you, don't you can just show up with a smile on your mm -hmm. face. Show up with a good countenance. Yes. And be pleasant. Speak when you're spoken to. Smile when you smile at. Mm -hmm. All of the things that are good that God gave us that would enhance our ability to deliver God's word is in us. <laughs> All we have to do is let it out. God gave us everything that we need. So this is our Christmas. And this is where we find ourselves. Loving God with all of our hearts, minds, body, and soul. Yes, he gave yes, his yes. All for mm -hmm. us. When he came to this earth as a human to experience what we experience. So that he could better serve us. Amen. And through that better service, we have to go all the way to Easter. Not trying to rush time or anything, but we need to know that we have to go all the way to Easter when he died for the sins of the world. That solidified mm -hmm. our kingdom destination. Thank Amen. You, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank he you, came so that we might live. He gave his life to confirm our life. And those of us who believe it in him should have eternal life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's Thank what you, Christmas Thank means. You, Jesus. And when we celebrate Christmas, if we could just put that first, if we could just put that first, before we tell our kids about what Santa is going to do, <laughs> just tell, him, tell them about what has been done Amen. so that Santa can do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Base your Christmas upon God and Amen. the King. Amen. And then enjoy the gifts. Amen. But we've already received the gift that keeps on giving. Amen. The gift that will never stop giving. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. But it is our mission now to give of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Christ gave us Him. So let's give of ourselves. Yes. And we do that simply again Thank you, by Lord. just being who we are and acknowledging other people. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We don't even have to like them. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have to like them. Thank you, Lord. But the Bible says that we should love one Amen. Amen. We love them as a creation of yes. God. Yes. Because He loved you so much yes. that He gave you this. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That is what Christmas is. Amen. That is what Christmas is. So every year we come to this point and we celebrate Christmas and we hear the Christmas story and then we go back out to our lives. Let us make a, a resolution this Christmas that this is a date that was set aside by Christ-loving people to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So let's do that first before we start our human Christmas celebration. Doing what we do on Christmas. Opening the presents and drinking eggnog. Mm -hmm. or whatever. Just doing whatever you do. Before you do that, acknowledge Christ Amen. and His birth. Because that's what started it, and that's why we're here. Amen?